We're standing inside the Conze government house, which was built in the 1860s by the federal government and a contractor by the name of Robert Stevens. Um, in the building, we have some panels talking about the corrupt scheme that these men came up with to attempt to obtain some of the Conze money to build these. Originally, there was supposed to have been 150 of these stone houses built, but 138 were only built. They were built in three different sizes. Now, this particular building that we have here was moved in 1954 by the Counts Grove Rotary Club as a club project. Uh, they took a, a original building that was south of Council Grove, about three miles, took it down piece by piece, and brought it back here and worked on it on weekends and evenings and recreated, attempted to recreate uh, what the Conze house would have originally looked like. Uh, this one's a little bit different. Um, it would have had two chimneys. There would have been more windows in the original building. This floor has had a concrete floor port in it. They would have had wooden floors. Uh, the walls are unplastered. There would have been white plastering on the walls. Uh, they would have actually had ceilings in them. Uh, they were quite comfortable, and that's why the white settlers, the squatters that were on this reservation in the 1850s, 1860s, um, once these are built, they take an opportunity to move into them. The Conze would go on two buffalo hunts a year. They would have a spring summer hunt, and then they would have a fall winter hunt. The fall winter hunt being the most important because the hair on the bison is the longest during that period. But what happens, there begins to be so many squatters settling on the call reservation here at Council Grove that when the tribe leaves here and goes 100 to 140 miles west of here, the squatters move into the houses uh, or steal the windows and doors out of them, making them unlivable. These were what the, the United States government felt the Conze needed to live in to become like white Europeans. Uh, they wanted them to farm independently in 40-acre plots, and each head of the household was given one of these houses and 40 acres to farm. And that's a problem in their society because they're very communal. They farm together, they live together, and their bark and hide lodges that they lived in were much, much bigger than these small stone houses. The Indian Removal Act of 1830 brings about 30 different tribes into what is now Kansas. This is what we're telling in this particular building. Our exhibits are about broken promises uh, that many tribes had to deal with as we see westward expansion. And they're all promised certain things and treaties and very little of it is ever uh, comes across to the tribe. And so what you'll find here in the Conze government house are stories from some of the Native American leaders that were affected by westward expansion.